It's often said, football was born in Ohio. But the soul of it lives in Cleveland. The land of hopes, dreams, and true believers. Rosa was hit the field goal. It'll be 15 yards. He puts the ball. It's up in the air. Good. And the Cleveland Browns are world champions. For 75 years, this team has reached milestones and made history, representing legends, innovators, game changers, heroes, and champions. The grit that this team is made of is the backbone of our city. Here's to the passion spirit and determination that started 75 years ago and the commitment to carry out a proud legacy for generations to come together we honor those that have written the chapters of our story and to the generations that are going to write the next one and the Browns have won it and they're going to the playoffs Dog Pound Nation, a Cleveland Browns podcast. Hello, everybody. Welcome back, Browns fans. Yes, yes, yes. How are you all doing tonight? Well, the Cleveland Browns 2021 schedule has been released, and it's interesting, to say the least. It is. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing how this works out for us this year, because we've got some really interesting games. Uh, we're not the Steelers or the Ravens. I feel sorry for their fans for dealing with the toughest schedules in the league this year. Yep. Uh, this is also the inaugural 17-game season. Yeah, I'm excited we get an extra game, and it's an extra home game, which is even better. I know. I'm very happy to hear that. Uh, let's get into this, shall we? All right, let's bring up the schedule on the screen for everybody to see. And here we go. Week one, we're starting off strong by a rematch of the AFC divisional round game against Um, the Chiefs. I've got to say I'm pleasantly surprised that we are going to open against the Chiefs, get a little bit of revenge. But um, to me, when I saw this was the first game, I immediately thought, this is the NFL saying that they know the Browns are for real and they want the elite matchup to open the season. I, I have to agree. I'm The Browns definitely have changed their way of thinking. Let's hope that last year wasn't a fluke season. Mm-hmm. They've made all the right moves this offseason to improve off last year. And we can only go up from where we were already. Well, I was very excited to see, because we talked about it in our draft show, that the Browns did get Jeremiah Orusu Koromora. I was very excited to see them trade up to get him. I know, and yeah, I don't know if you've read this as well. I'm sure you have, but uh, they liked him enough that if Newsom wasn't there at 26, they were probably going to be taking Koromora at the, that pick. Koromora's got to be disappointed thinking, crap, that would have been more money if Newsom would have been off the board. They're still probably going to pay him well. I mean, though, Newsom and Cormo are probably going to be week one starters. So, yeah, yeah, no, it, it, it'll be good. He'll get, he'll get, he'll get his pay, and I, uh, I'm really excited to finally see a fast, speedy linebacker to replace <clears throat> Andrew Sandejo. Less said about that, the better. But anyway, rematch from AFC divisional round against the Chiefs here, week one. Uh, we're gonna be out for blood on this one. Uh, yeah. Um, we're gonna I we're gonna be game. here to prove that we could have won that game. Uh, yeah. Um, and I think we uh we deserved that game. Um, but we went into that on our other episode, and sadly, um, yeah, we won't get into that. So I'm gonna chalk this one up as uh potential underdog victory for us here. You you, you think uh, the Browns can pull this one off to open the season? I think they can pull this off to win, open the season up. 
God, I hope you're right. So I'm marking this one as a victory for us. Yeah, I think it's going to be a close game. Um, I'm anticipating a very close matchup. Um, oh, yeah, it's going to be close. Like This isn't going to be a blowout one way or another. No, this is going to be a tight game, and I think it's potential we could see this game again being possibly – another divisional playoff game later in the year, or even potentially uh, maybe the To AFC see who plays to go to the Super Bowl, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think that's very possible. Okay, so next game is uh, Texans at Browns, a 1 p.m. start. Uh, this one, again, is a, another victory for the Browns, especially yeah. with the Texans being without Deshaun Watson right now. Uh, is, is the Sean Watson, uh, was he cut by the Texans? No, he's still part of the team, but I don't think they're planning on playing him. Okay. Okay. So that pretty much could, could basically mean the Browns are playing whoever their backup is. I don't even know who their backup is right now. I don't know either. I'm not too worried about it. All I know is that I think this is going to be a blowout. Yeah. I anticipate a huge blowout here and, uh, yeah, I think that it was being the Browns' home opener and uh, going to be coming off a big win against the Chiefs, that the Browns are going to be really determined here and uh, open up the season at home with a win. Yeah. Next right. game here, we've got the Chicago Bears. Okay, so the this Chicago one Bears. I think could go either way, but I think I'm going to lean more towards Browns' favor on this game only because. I see Justin Fields being the week one starter. I also think that nerves are going to get to him the first few weeks. Yeah, I don't see the Bears pulling this one off. You know, they got a new quarterback. Um, I don't know. I just – I don't I don't see them being much of a threat here for this game. Um, they, I mean, they, they could make it interesting. I don't want to, you know, say otherwise here. But, uh, yeah, I, I don't think this is going to be a game that's really going to be um, all that threatening. No, no, I don't really see it being all that threatening. So I'm, I'm saying we've got another win under our belt here. Yeah, most definitely. All right, so moving on. So the Browns will now play the uh, the Vikings on the road in Minnesota. This one, this one's tough for me. Yeah. I mean, both teams are looking good. I think I'm going to give this one to the Browns, but I think this is going to be a really close matchup as well. You think so? Yeah. I think this can be a lot closer than people think. Um, Yeah. I mean, the Vikings, I think, are still somewhat of a decent team. So I think that they have potential here to possibly play a spoiler. But, yeah, I think I give the Browns a slight edge here. Mm-hmm. This is where it gets a little bit interesting now. Browns at Chargers. Oh, I think this is where we're going to see the first loss of the season. Potentially, I could I could definitely see that, unfortunately. Close so, game? Close game, possibly. But oh. I am with uh, Browns possibly going 4-0 into this. They could be going in with more confidence than maybe they – think they deserve or something like that. I don't know I just think they're going to be going to this a little overconfident yeah because I think of it this way so at this point the Browns could very be very well be five and oh or four and oh sorry four and oh yeah I could see that potentially being one of those games where the Browns are riding a high streak and they get a little bit ahead of themselves and uh they get upset yeah so I, right now I had the Browns at four and one. So four, uh, I'm about where you are too. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna agree with that. About four and one, I'm gonna say at the moment. Okay, so this is another interesting game against the Cardinals. Uh, the Browns are gonna shit on them. You think so? You don't think Kyler Murray's gonna pose much of a threat here? The Browns are gonna shit on them. There are this is our after the upset I have the Chargers winning the last the week prior. I have the Browns secondary lighting up the uh, Cardinals receiving core this week. Yeah, I could I could kind of see your point here. I mean, if, if this was the Browns defense of last year, like, I could have maybe think, said, I you know. I think we're going to be seeing uh, records being set this game. You think so? Yeah. Do you th uh, So you're anticipating not a close game here? 
Not even, not even close. Um. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna say the Browns may win this game by ten. I think this is gonna be at least a two touchdown game. Wow. Okay. All right. All right. I I could I could. We'll see. But here we got our Browns first primetime game, week seven. Brown Broncos at Browns, eight twenty five start on Thursday night football. Whoa, we're playing the Broncos. I'm a little dumbfounded as to why of all the primetime matchups they could have chose here for the first one, why it's the Broncos. Probably because they want to give us an easy victory uh, game. <sighs> yeah, they want to see the Browns just light it up on Thursday night. Yeah. They don't want to see a uh, potential uh, Browns being challenged here. I hate to say that, that they're actually going to want to give the Browns a break. But It's possible. I have the Browns 6-1 and one right now after this game. Oh, boy. To me, to me, I want to say, God, I hope you're right, but I don't know. You really think that? Browns are going to be six and one after this game. All right, all right, I'll, 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 I'll go. I'll run with you here. Yeah, I think this is. I think this is going to be a blowout game too for them. Uh, but now the rematch: Steelers at Browns, Week Eight. Very late to be playing a division rival. The first division rival game. Yeah, I mean, what's up with this? We've never had a division game this late in the season. Oh, they, I don't know. I had to want to get some of the, uh, I guess, easier games out of the way this year. Well, yeah, I guess you know this. We we we've got because here, last I mean, year, I mean, because last year we had one of the easiest schedules in the league in the second half of the season. We oh yeah we did because we played the Jets we played the Giants unfortunately we lost to the Jets don't get me started on that bullshit of a game. But this is where it starts getting interesting and a little more challenging to predict here. It all depends on how the Steelers' offensive line is holding up at this point in the season because this marks really the halfway point of the season. Well, that's exactly it, and and I'm kind of wondering like where the Steelers will be at this point because, like we've said before, they have the toughest schedule in the NFL this year, and I don't think that team is anywhere ready for that. It's also a matter of, look, this being the first 17-game season, I don't know if any team is going to be truly ready for that just yet. Mm, and no. we're also looking at a – Steelers team that has a really weak offensive line, a quarterback that I'm surprised is still feeling like he's able to play at a high level. I still cannot believe that they decided to stick with Roethlisberger because it's like, do they not see that he's just a sinking ship? Uh, who knows? I don't know. I, I just think that the Steelers are making a mistake. But you know what? Their, their mistake is our game. Because I, I don't, I, I just I, it's fine. They're gonna. We're suck also this year. talking about a Steelers team whose defense is always usually pretty good. So I'm, I'm still a little nervous about this game. Well, I, I could fairly see that the Browns may split with the Steelers this year because seems I don't know. I think we're gonna take this one. You think we're going to take the one at home? Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I mean, I, I would love to see the Browns be able to go into Pittsburgh again and win. I think that would be just the – Oh, I would love to see that as well, but I just don't know. I think this is going to be a close game, but I have the Browns squeaking this one out. So I have us at 7-1 and one right now. 7-1. and one. Okay, so we go back to Browns at Bengals. 8-1. Eight and one. Uh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, definitely eight and one here. Um, I, I think it might gotta... be. I'm hoping that it's going to be better than it was the two games we had last year against them, where our D, our defense, mainly our secondary, were getting lit up by Burrow. Well, last year, yeah, because the, the Spangles could have very easily stole that second game from us if it wasn't for uh, 
Baker's um, game-winning drive. Yeah. Which was, by the way, just awesome. And uh, one of the highlights of last year, most definitely. Look, we've definitely got to step up our defense. And I'm hoping that with all the moves we've made this offseason at defense, and especially in secondary, that we are going to see some major improvement here. And this game won't be as close as we want it to be. I could see the Browns um, maybe blowing them out at home. I don't know. if it, Cincinnati might put up a little bit of fight at home, maybe a little bit. I don't know, but I have us at 8-1 here. All right. So going to New England to battle Bill Belichick. It's the curse of Belichick. We're losing this game. We're eight and two. Wow, you 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 really uh, jumped the gun there. Why 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 do you think that Belichick's going to win this game? Uh, Belichick seems to just have our number when it comes to regular season games. Yeah, he yeah. said we've all. How many games have we won against a Belichick coach team? Since we've returned? One or two. How many have we played? Like five, six. That's not a good track record. No. I guess it depends on who's quarterback here, though. Is it is it going to be Cam Newton or their new draft star? That's the question. It's probably going to be Mac Jones. So you think Mac Jones is going to beat the Browns' new newly improved defense? Mac Jones does give off a Tom Brady sort of vibe to me. Even in year one? I don't know. I've just gut feeling. Okay. All right. I think uh, this I think this is only gonna be like a one possession game, but I think we're gonna be eight and two after this. I'll, I'm gonna I'm gonna side with you on that. I'll I'll give you that one for sure. Um so Lions at Browns. Nine Browns. and two. Nine and two. This is no question here. The Lions ain't pulling this one out of their hat. No. So we're not even gonna we're not even gonna dwell on this game because I'm not afraid of Jared Goff in a new Detroit Lions uniform. Sorry. That doesn't scare me. No, it doesn't scare me at all either. And here comes the biggest game of the season, finally. Sunday night football, Browns at Ravens. I wouldn't even call this the biggest game of the season for us. Why? But because I think the the, the Christmas game is going to be our biggest game of the season. If Rodgers plays at Green Bay. Either that or the Pittsburgh game the week after is going to be our biggest game. But what if Rodgers doesn't stay in Green Bay? I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. But I'm looking forward to this one because uh, – I'm going time... off with Rodgers still on the team right now. Yeah, okay. But so for this one, we are playing in Baltimore – we are playing a Baltimore team that drafted a really highly rated wide receiver to give Lamar Jackson more options to throw to. Well, yeah, they, yeah. The only reason why um, I'm going to give the Browns the slight edge here is because the Browns always seem to play well in prime time. And I think they're looking for a little bit of that revenge of that last game in Cleveland they got beaten at the last second with Lamar Jackson coming out from his cramps and finishing the game. Cramps. But at the same time, it is Baltimore. I think we'll have a better chance at home. So I'm going to give this one to the Ravens, much I don't want to. So you are now at nine. I have and it three. at I have us at nine and three going into the bye week. Nine and three. Okay. Um, I'm I'm finally gonna break from you here. I'm gonna give the Browns a slim win here, so that puts them at ten and two. Okay. So the week thirteen bye, and then we play Baltimore again. And we're gonna shit on them at home. I yeah. think we're going to be coming out. We're play, We're going to show Lamar Jackson what happens in a newly revamped Cleveland team in Cleveland. 
Yeah, I, I have to agree. Now, this is where I get a little conflicted because I just said they were going to win in Baltimore. So now I'm, and now that I, for, I forgot they played back to back. I hate, I'd love to see it, but I don't think the Browns are going to pull off back to back wins here against Baltimore. I think they're going to split these. I, so, I have us at 10 and 3 here. So I'm going to have to shift gears because I forgot they played Baltimore twice. So we're both at 10 and 3 now. Then, week after that, we've got the Raiders game. Which is to be determined when this game is going to be played. So this could be flexed into a uh, primetime game if it's if there's playoff repercussions. Uh, but we'll find that out later in the year. This is also a rematch of the game that happened last year when we had that crazy snowstorm in Cleveland with the insane weather. Yeah, uh, the game that I don't believe the Raiders won because they're better than they, they were better than us because they definitely weren't better than us. Well, they were able to run the ball all over us, and that was a major issue. Mm-hmm. Was that did we? We didn't have Nick Chubb then. We it was Kareem Hunt because he was hurt, right? I think so. Yeah, which is another factor as to why it didn't go the way it probably should have, but. I'm going to go with a little bit of revenge here. I have us winning this one. I have us at 11-3 and three here. 11-3, and three. yep. So week 16, the Browns are playing on Christmas Day. Ho, ho, ho. This is a real big surprise to me that the Browns were given a Christmas game. Yeah, I had a feeling that the Browns may either might get a Thanksgiving game this year, but this is actually better because this is the first year – the NFL is actually playing like, here's at Christmas. The problem, here's the problem with that, though, Mike. The, the Thanksgiving games are almost always the exact same teams every year. It doesn't matter whether they're Shit a good teams. or bad record. Shit teams. Lions, Cowboys. Shit. But they're also teams that have always been in those Thanksgiving games. It's time for a tradition to change. I'm fine with it being those teams that are in Thanksgiving. That's fine. I, the Christmas game is going to be really interesting to me here. If Rodgers is still in Green Bay, this is a big if on this game here. I have the Browns going 11-4. and four. If Rodgers is no longer a part of Green Bay come season start, I have us at 12-3. and three. Okay, well, I think regardless of Rodgers being there or not, I think the Browns will give us the best Christmas present of 2021, and they will put us up to 12-3. and We'll have to see on that one. Okay, so Week 17, which would typically be the final game of the season, which is no longer the case, Browns at Steelers on Monday Night Football. Which... Had the Browns winning the first game at home. Again, this all is a matter of because these rest of these games all the for me depend on whether or not Aaron Rodgers is still part of Green Bay. Mm. So I could even have us at thirteen and three here at twelve and four. I to be honest with you, I just I don't I don't see the Steelers beating the Browns this year at all because I just think the Steelers are a mess. Um, I think the Browns have their have, have their ducks in a row. The Steelers just don't. We are also playing them in Pittsburgh this game, though. So true. But the only reason why I say that the Steelers will not win a game is because their defense now is a mess because they lost three of their big defense guys in free agency. So now they're depleted. They really didn't go out and get anybody to replace those guys. I don't see how Chubb, Baker, OBJ, Landry, I don't see how they could not put up 30 or 35 on the Steelers' defense with, with the way they're depleted. We'll I have to wait and see what happens when it comes to that. But like I said, it, that one's still dependent on the Packers game for me. Mm-hmm. Okay, so the final game of the season, the shit Bengals coming to Cleveland for the final game of the season. I'm going to I'm just going to put out my final record here now. I think we'll be 14 and 3. Yeah, that's where I'm at too. Um 
I think the Browns are going to be flirting with 14 and three, 13 and four. I think that's kind of what we're looking at here. Um, I looking at this schedule for this being the ninth toughest schedule. I see a lot of games here that are not really as bad as I thought they would be. We've also we're also playing teams that had a lot of winning records so last season that you may end up changing how it turns out this year though because of yeah. different uh, moves being made. Well, I definitely like the Browns' first eight games compared to their last eight games. Their first eight games, I I see a lot of games here that are just they're going to be a breeze. Yeah, I think for them, or or at least they should be a breeze. Um, but the back, the back half is going to be, it's going to be a tough schedule minus that uh, Detroit Lions game. Uh, that, that ain't, that ain't. What kind of breeze are we talking about here? A light breeze, strong breeze, Drew breeze? We'll say a Drew breeze because I see all kinds of winning in the first eight games. And then failing in the playoffs? Wow. And retiring after? No, no, not not that. I, I didn't say playoffs for Drew Brees. We, we'll go away from Drew Brees for the playoffs. We're going to Tom Brady mode. Let's hope. We need to – We I want to see us do well this year. I think we'll do well this year. I think so. I um, think we're going to be fighting for a number one seed. Now, okay, as we get to the predictions now. So, I think the Browns are going to win the AFC North. I think. Oh, yeah, I think the Browns are winning the AFC North. Mm-hmm. Um, might only be by a game or two. I think the Ravens will will definitely give them a, a run. Uh, so I think Browns first place. Ravens will finish either a game or two behind the Browns. Uh, uh, it's going to be the Raven. Or it's, no, it's not going to be the Raven. It's going to be the Browns, Ravens, Steelers, Bengals. For sure. I, I, to be honest with you, I don't see the Ra- I don't see the Steelers doing any better than five hundred. Ah. <sighs> They may, but I, yeah, I'm gonna have to say they're gonna finish maybe a game over 500, if that. Yeah, I the, the being the toughest schedule, I can't see them putting up, you know, 10, 11 wins here. I just don't, I don't no. see it. Mm-mm, not with and not in a, a, a 17 game schedule that teams are gonna have to get used to from here on out after this year. Mm-hmm. I it's just I can definitely. Definitely sees a lot of changes happening when it comes to play styles. And I think that the Steelers are going to be playing from behind on this one now. Yeah, agreed. Now the question is, we've been hearing all the big speculation that the Browns could potentially be a team potentially a favorite to go to the Super Bowl. What do you think? The hype is real. The hype is there. Are we a Super Bowl contending team now? Potentially a dark horse, I think. I don't mm-hmm. see us being clear cut. We're contenders for the Super Bowl, but I think we have the chance that we have the potential to be a dark horse contender. Like yeah. being one of the ones that slipped through that people didn't think were going to get into the Super Bowl. I think the only team the Browns, again, have to worry about is Kansas City. I think that's their legitimate contender in the AFC. If they find a way to get past them, I don't see how they, they don't get to the Super Bowl because I don't. the Bills are good. The Bills are really good. Do I think the Bills are better than the Browns? No. Because the Bills team that we saw play against Kansas City in the AFC championship game, Mm-hmm. It is the same Bills team that I feel like we could have ran all over. Oh, for sure. For but sure. But it's a matter of what t- version of both those teams are we going to see this season. That's exactly it. Uh, are the Bills going to be improved? Are they going to be the same? What is Patrick Mahomes going to do with his team this year? What – is Josh Allen going to pull off this year as well? That's true. I mean, the top four teams are obviously Chiefs, Bills, Browns, and and Ravens. That's that's your four big teams. I don't really see any other in teams. In the AFC? Yeah. Mm-hmm. We're also forgetting about a 
couple other teams, I feel like, somewhere, but I can't quite put my finger on who. Tennessee. Uh, Tennessee is still good. Uh, Indianapolis could be a team to watch because Carson Wentz might be a good fit there, so that might be something to really keep an eye on. Yeah, Carson Wentz is going to be an issue, I feel like, if he can get rolling in Indianapolis. Yeah, I think this is a good second chance for him, and I think Indianapolis is the perfect place for his second chance. We'll have to wait and see what happens. But all in all, um, I'm I'm happy with the schedule. I think I would have maybe liked an, another primetime game or two, but the Browns could still get that flexed at the end of the season. And, and you never know what's going to happen with scheduling changes and all that. We could end up with more and not even know it yet. That's true, because I think the last five or six weeks is flex scheduling, so – the Browns may still get one more in there at the end of the season. I mean, look at last season. Like, we had a lot of games that went to flex scheduling. Or two, were two games, two games were two games flexed at the end of the season or just one? I think it was two, I don't right? Remember. I think it was two. The Giants game got flexed to, to Sunday night. Uh, maybe that was the I don't know. We're going to have to wait and see. Yeah. Well, I'm happy. I, I, I think that. Uh, the schedule favors us. Um, I think. The, I think the biggest shocker of this whole schedule is the fact that the Browns don't play a division rival till Week Eight. That's the shocking thing that I, I still can't even believe because usually we get them in the first two or three weeks of the season. No, I know. I agree. So, all in all, yeah. So that's the Browns' schedule. So uh, we are getting close. Oh yeah, they. We we forgot to mention that preseason does not have an official start date. Uh, the three weeks of preseason, they're playing at Jacksonville, uh, in New York against the Giants, and then at Atlanta for the final week. Uh, the yeah. last game at Atlanta looks like it's going to be an NBC Sunday night preseason game, it says. So, um, Ooh, uh, I know, but, um, but yeah, so this is the, this is the last podcast really for, Bra- for our podcast for the Browns, probably until preseason starts. All right, ladies and gentlemen, with that, I am Jason Kabasik here with Mike Winkler signing off from Dog Pound Nation. We'll see you when it comes preseason time. Go Browns. Go Browns. We'll see you in August. Thank you for listening to Dog Pound Nation, a Cleveland Browns podcast.